Now let's take a closer look at our transfer function. So our transfer function is going to algebraically relate a system's output and input, at least if we're talking about it in our frequency domain. And so we can think of that as a block diagram, as I've shown here, where we have some input in the frequency domain R of S being fed into a block, that's the transfer function. And then on our output side, we have our output C of S. So to get sort of a generalized form for our transfer function, let's take the Laplace transform of that differential equation we had in a previous video. So we wanna take the Laplace transform of this mess here. And so again, remember we said the whole sort of purpose of doing this is we have our input information, our output information, and our system information kind of all mixed up in this differential equation. So to make things a little easier, what we're going to do like we saw in the previous example, is we're going to assume all initial conditions are zero. And so what that's going to do is that's going to make those transforms where we have derivatives a lot easier. So all of our initial conditions are zero. So as I sort of alluded to, we're gonna do a similar approach uh, as we did with our previous example. We're going to use our differentiation property and so you can look at the previous video or in table 2.2 for that. But if we do that, we can take our Laplace transform of this equation pretty easily. So remember our a sub n, a sub n minus 1, all the way to a naught, and then same thing with our b sub m, all the way to b naught, are just numbers. Those are our coefficients. So from our linearity property, those just come along for the ride. So we have, for instance, a sub n. And so for instance, maybe that's 5, for example. Uh, so then when we're looking at this derivative term, we say we have the nth derivative. So we have s to the power of n times c, capital C, of s. And because all of our initial conditions are zero, that's the only term that we have for that, that, that term in our differential equation. So if we keep on doing that in the same way, we have plus a sub n minus 1 times s to the n minus 1 times c of s. Again, that's the only term because we have no initial conditions, plus so on and so forth until we get down to our last term on the side of the equal sign, which is going to be a naught times c of s. So that's going to be equal to, and now we do the exact same thing on the other side. So we have b sub m, which is again, just going to be a constant coefficient, times s to the power of m times capital R of s, no other terms because our initial conditions are zero. So that's it for this term here. Now we have plus b sub m minus one times s to the power of it, m minus one times r of s plus so on and so forth plus b naught times r of s. So now what we can do is we can rearrange this and we can say, Let's define some g of s, which is going to be our transfer function. And so our transfer function, by definition, is going to be equal to the input, or sorry, the output divided by the input. So we have our controlled variable output c of s divided by our reference input r of s. And so solving this previous equation up here, we can, of course, factor out our C of S of all of these terms in the top, uh, or on the left side of the equation. On the right side, we can factor out R of S from each of the terms. So it's pretty easy to get an expression for our transfer function, and so that ends up being B sub M times S to the power of M plus B sub M minus one, S to the power of M minus one, plus so on and so forth, all the way down to B naught and all of that is divided by a sub n, s to the power of n plus a sub n minus one times s to the power of n minus one plus so on and so forth all the way down to a naught. Okay, so again, g of s is our transfer function and so sort of one thing that's important to note and I've mentioned this a couple times before is now we can say that c of s is equal to g of s times r of s. So in general, what that's telling us is that once we know this transfer function g of s, we can predict the output c of s for a given input r of s. And so that's sort of the basic 
idea that we're going for here is we want to sort of characterize the system and we want that to be distinct from our input and output so that we can predict our output based on a given input. And so of course we can kind of come back and refine this block diagram we drew up here at the start. So if we want to do that, we can just copy this expression here. And so again, keep in mind, this is going to be, of course, numerical values uh, for our M, our B sub M, all of those things are gonna be numerical values in actual problems. So we have that in a block. On the left side, we have our input, which is our R of S. And on the right, we have our output, which is our C of S. And of course, we could have a block diagram in the time domain as well. We just have to inverse Laplace transform what's in here. What we're going to do in the next few videos is we're going to start looking at how we can use these ideas of transfer functions, Laplace transform to model electrical networks. Once we sort of get into the basics of that, we'll look at a way to generalize it and then we'll move on to our mechanical systems.